This is a demo of a web app I built. It's an e-commerce store. There's a user facing side and an admin facing side. Non-logged in users can see the storefront with all of the products listed. The user can sort the items based on category. I'm using GSAP for the animations. The user can add an item to the cart and remove an item from the cart. When the user adds items to their cart, the number of items is reflected in the upper right hand corner in the cart icon. I built this custom sliding nav drawer and animated blur effect using GSAP. I was attempting to emulate the glass morphism effect seen in Apple operating systems. The user can increase and decrease the quantity of each item in the cart, and the subtotal is reflected accordingly. If a line item drops to zero quantity, it's removed from the cart. Let's add more items into the cart. And let's try to place an order. A non-logged in user will be redirected to the login page. Note the notification animation at the bottom of the screen. For these form inputs on this page, I built these custom with CSS, using React, of course. The user can hide or display their password. Note the loading animation. A successful login is redirected back to the home page. Let's now place the order. I'm using the Stripe Checkout API for credit card transactions. Successful credit card transactions are routed back to the success page in my web apps. The user facing side of the app is responsive. Let's step through the registration flow. We first check the database to see if the username is already taken. If the username is already taken, the user is redirected to the login page. For the forms on the login registration, I built custom validation in the form inputs. I'm using a regular expression to make sure that this is a valid email. Let's register a new user. Note the animation. Let's now log in for this newly created user. Let's test an incorrect password. Let's now log in as an admin to see the admin dashboard. The previous demo you saw of the user facing side was done on my live deployed site. This demo you're going to see right now, this demo of the admin facing side is going to be performed on a local version of my website since I currently have a bug that's in the deployed site. The admin dashboard has five pages, a users page, an orders page, a products page, a data analysis page, and a messages page. Let's first look at the products page since it utilizes all CRUD operations. This table lists all of the products in the database. On this page we can add products, we can edit products, and we can delete products. Let's add a product.
you can see the new product here. Let's go ahead and edit that product. You edit it by clicking this gear icon. Let's call it Nike Shoes. Let's change the price to 7777. That's $77.77. This is in pennies. As you can see here, the name has been changed, the price has been changed. And let's go ahead and delete a product. You delete a product by opening the settings for that product, selecting the options, and then enabling the delete, and then we actually delete the product. And as you can see, that product has been deleted. Let's log in as a customer to make sure these updates can be seen in the storefront. So remember, we just created this Nike Shoes product for $77.77. Go ahead and log out, and then we will log in as a customer. Oops. And as you can see, this is the product we just added. Let's go ahead and place an order under this uh, new user, and let's see if the uh, see the order reflected in the admin dashboard. So we'll add one of those new products that we just added, the Nike shoes. We'll go ahead and maybe do two of those. And then let's add another one. Let's say product seven. Place that order. Now we will log in as the admin. And when you log in as admin, it automatically loads on the orders page. This row corresponds to the order we just placed. Let's go ahead and click the drop down button. And as you can see, Nike shoes, quantity two, product seven, quantity one. So this is the orders page, and it displays a list of all the orders in the database. As we saw, this top order is the order we just placed. And you can sort by date and time, which is the default setting. And so that means the most recent orders at the top and the oldest orders at the bottom. Uh, if we switch to, because it's in descending order, if we switch to ascending order, the oldest one would be at the top and the newest one would be at the bottom. So you can also sort by the last name in alphabetical order, by the first name, by the username, and by the total. So the highest price, the largest order price is at the top. You can also uh, filter by order status. So I created several different statuses for the order. So this would be what I call stage one. So it's only displaying stage one orders. And then this would only display orders in stage two, what I call stage three. And then there's also an error stage. And then you can display all statuses. And then you also can uh, filter by date range. So you're only seeing orders in this given date range. So the default date range is, it grabs whatever date today is, and then it grabs uh, the date range between today and the last seven days, so it's uh, one week. And this is a custom calendar I built. Uh, I built it completely custom in React, and you can select any date range So this would be between January 30th and February 3rd. And the calendar updates just for the orders placed in that date range. So this is the one we just placed here. And if you rewind the video, apparently we placed the order exactly at 12 a.m. So if you rewind the video, you actually could look at this time down here and see that this was placed at 12 a.m.